introduce me? Am I on? Yes. Hey, good evening, Tampa. Thanks so much for tuning in. I wish we could have done this together and it gone a little more smoothly, but uh, but I'm grateful we're able to connect virtually. And thank you for your kind connection and for the heroic work that you and the Nurses Association are doing to meet this moment. I'm so grateful to you and to Congresswoman Castro, as well as Charlie Chris, my buddy, and State Senator Cruz. Remarkable leaders are all stepping up for the people of the community in this community right now. You know, I hope that all of you who are joining us tonight and your families are staying safe and healthy. It's an incredibly anxious moment for our communities, for our nation, and quite frankly, for the world. My prayers are with all those who are scared, as we're sick and grieving, and are struggling to get by. You know, as we speak tonight, more than 75,000 Americans have lost their lives in the pandemic. The toll is so immense. It can be hard for us to truly grasp the scale of the tragedy. You know, we aren't equipped to come face to face with such staggering losses, but we have to. We must. For each one of those lives is an American story cut short. It's a family shattered, a community deprived of something unique and essential. It's a really hard truth to admit, but if we're honest with ourselves, we know that it'll take a, it's a generation to truly heal from this disaster. No, this is amazing because more than that, it's breaking. Well, I think about how much fear, how much loss, how much action could have been avoided. President Trump wasted so much time getting started. The warning signs were mounting in January. I was raising the alarm back then, and so were others, including the intelligence community, the federal intelligence community, the CIA, and others. But Trump was warned more than a dozen times. He knew he couldn't have been developing, he could have been developing an, an adequate test and deploying them. He invoked the Production Act to ensure that every community was ready. You know, we could have been bracing the public to act quickly in order to slow the spread. Instead, denial, delays, and distractions. You know, that ball flies about testing capacity. That was his quote. Anybody who wants to test can get it. Quote. That wasn't remote months ago. It still isn't. We've got promises that, quote, one day, this like America will disappear. Well, he had months and months to take action, to lead with urgency. But he did nothing. He falsified this experts. Now 75,000 Americans are gone. And more than 33 million of fire from employment. Millions more to pay their bills. Small businesses dreamed up at the kitchen table, fought for and made real, and snuffed This president summoned barely a word, barely a word of empathy, of responsibility, of regret. There is no indication whatsoever that he understands the depth of the pain and the loss this crisis has brought. At the same time, this pandemic is exploiting the gaps of inequity that have always existed in our society. You know, it's, it's ranking open the disparities and injustices that we've allowed to fester. You know, it's estimated that 90% of African-American-owned businesses were shut out of the first wave of relief, not because relief package was racist on its face, but because of pre-existing systematic disparity, disparities in our lending, our lending system. You know, we should be designing our economic response to avoid these desperate outcomes. And they're not only desperate, they're, they're, they affect people in so many different ways. So the funds can actually reach people in communities and small businesses, you know, that, that they're supposed to be helping. We should be reversing half, half of what of the mistakes have gone. We should make sure that relief funds go to small businesses with 50 or fewer employees. By the way, 90 percent of minority-owned and women-owned businesses fall under that category, 50 employees or less. We should be ensuring that every single American has access to affordable health care, including Medicare-like plan if they want it. And we should make sure that health costs related to COVID-19 are completely free. Now, this crisis is really so much about our society, including just how critical it is to have competence in government. In Florida, more than 1.7 million have filed for unemployment support. 
but over 70% of them have been ignored. In the thick of this crisis, Florida has the worst rate of fulfilling unemployment claims of any state in the country. It's no surprise the unemployment system was allowed to uh, be hollowed out by Governor Scott back in 2011. It was slashed to the bone, and you're now seeing the results. It's un unconscionable. Families are struggling. Every single day, they matter. We have to help the people who need help. How to get it equitably and immediately. You know, <laughs> it's often said that crisis reveals character. And this crisis revealed just how dangerous and competent Donald Trump and his enablers have been. You know, in the whole light of day, we're seeing the cost of his vanity, his paranoia, his refusal to face the truth. We're seeing a man completely overwhelmed by the moment, who doesn't have the temperament or, quite frankly, the moral authority to meet this test. Tragically, we're seeing the truth that he doesn't place high enough value on American lives to make the right calculations, the right choices. His priorities are elsewhere, and it shows. Thankfully, however, we're seeing something else right now. In the absence of presidential leadership, we're seeing the soul of the American people shine through. We're seeing doctors and nurses, MTs, and other health care providers selflessly put themselves in the line and some actually give their lives fight this virus and protect our communities. We're seeing grocery store workers, delivery drivers, public transit workers, too often our lowest paid workers carry this country on their backs. And we're seeing Americans step up for one another in meaningful ways, picking up groceries for a vulnerable neighbor, reaching out with video calls to check a friend who might be having a hard time. All across the country, we're seeing the outpouring of gratitude for our care providers as communities come together to thank them and celebrate their work. You know, that's who we are as Americans. Big hearted, selfless, ready to raise the end challenge. Challenge we're coming into it. This moment can be and must be a stirring reminder that we are we are a country that is really all about the American people. We have an opportunity to show the world and to prove to ourselves what America is capable of, what America is going to take an extraordinary amount of work, and we're going to do it, not just to rebuild our country, but to transform it, to finally invest in our workers, because we know how essential they are now, to create a more just and inclusive where everyone has an opportunity to build a better life for their families, to make sure everyone in this country earns a living wage, treated with dignity and respect. And we have to be strong and resilient, but we also have to have a strong and resilient safety net to keep us going in hard times. No, our view now may be limited to the part to the base to the means of our device. You see what I see. Because even terrible going through, we're separated physically. The enduring difficult times even through all I see the nation ready to come together. Tan will not be broken. Our communities will not be broken. Our country will not be broken. Not by this pandemic, not by anything, as long as we stand united. America is tough, resilient, resourceful. So we may be down now, but we're not out. It's always been a bad bet against America. We're going to get through this. And we can come out the other side so stronger, so much kinder, so much closer, more, more resilient than we've ever been before. We need to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. Nothing, nothing we cannot accomplish if we work together. Come this November, we're going to prove it by working together now. Thank you. Thank you all for being movement. And God bless you all and may God protect our children. Thank you again.